Jesus died for the world. He didn't die for Christians. He died for the world. His death was to bring everything to equilibrium. To bring everything. To cancel out death. But he didn't come just to pay the price. He said, I came to give you the essence. His death was a necessary prerequisite so that he can do this thing. Because what he wanted to do was this thing. He said, I am come that ye may have life. Ye may have the way. Ye may have the essence of divinity and have it to the full. Praise God. Let's read John chapter 6, chapter 3, verse 6. John chapter 3, verse 6. We all know that scripture, but let's open to it and read. Because it's important, the scripture I just read to you, you've always seen that scripture, John 10, 10, but you've never thought about it this way. So let's look at this one too, because you've always read this. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, Huh? For God so loved the world, the world, what world? The world of sinners, the world of sinners. God so loved the world of sinners that he gave his only begotten son. How did he give his only begotten son? In his death. He gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice, as a payment. He says, he says, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Whosoever believeth in him, believeth in, in who? In this begotten son. In this work that he did. What did he do? He says, he was given up for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. The chastisement for our peace. That chastisement that was the payment for our peace was upon him by his stripes who we were healed. Come on, amen. You know, and, and when you read the scripture in context, he was really talking about the Jews. He says, all we like sheep has gone astray. Every man to his own way. I know that preachers have preached from this scripture and they look at it generically, but when you study in context, it was talking about the sheep, the people of God. All we like sheep have gone astray. And when you read the scripture I read to you also from John chapter 10, Jesus was addressing the Jews. He says, the thief cometh. Now, we've always quoted that scripture and we said the thief cometh referring to the devil. But when you study that scripture in context, it's not the devil that the scripture says Jesus was referring to as a thief. He was referring to false prophets and false teachers. He says the one who is the shepherd of the sheep is the one who is the door. Who comes through the door? Who comes through the right access? Who creates the right access? Then he says, I am the door of the sheep. He says, so you will know that I am the true shepherd. He says, the proof that I am the true shepherd is that I give up my life for the sheep. This is the proof that I am the true shepherd. I give up my life. So we see here, we see here, he says, believe that this one who died on the cross, just like Moses, hallelujah. He said, like Moses lifted up the brazen serpent. He said, so must the son of man be lifted up. You know, it's so important that you have the accurate knowledge of God's word. If you don't have the accurate knowledge of God's word, you would even write songs and think they are Christian songs, but they are so scripturally, scripturally wrong. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up. For the world to see, he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, 
I will draw all men unto me. That song is so wrong. I mean, what is wrong about the song? Because lift Jesus higher, that lift there is praise. Lift him high, lift him high, praise him, praise him. Then the, the writer references what Jesus said. For he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, when Jesus was talking about being lifted up from the earth, he wasn't talking about praise. He was talking about his death. So if this lifting that you're talking about, lifting him higher, and the lifting that Jesus talked about, if you say they are the same thing, you're saying kill him again. That's because Jesus said, as the son of, he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent. He says, so must, here it is, he didn't say so should, so must, must. He says, so must the son of man be lifted up. Letting you know that this is not just a conditional prophecy. This is something that will happen. You know, it is a prerequisite. It must happen. It is so much the Son of Man be lifted up. The lifting up was him being lifted on the cross. Him being lifted on the cross as man's payment for sins. As man's payment for sins. So you shouldn't be asking him to be lifted up again. Because if you're asking for him to be lifted up again, like he said he was to be lifted up, you're asking him to die again. 